you gotta say this is a pretty special spot to wake up to with first light coming up over the plains of St. Augustine out here in the beautiful backcountry of New Mexico. And way out here in the middle of nowhere is the very large array which is an extremely large and very unique telescope that is watching and listening to outer space of any sign of other life that might be out there. Welcome to New Mexico. This is freaking phenomenal. Matter of fact, out here in the back hills of New Mexico is where I spent a lot of the time as a kid, my mom and dad taking us kids out way out here in the backcountry into the Gila National Forest for some camping, some fishing, going out and traveling dirt roads. I feel that that's probably where I get my nature of wanting to go out and explore here in the van. It all started out here in the hills of New Mexico. So this is going to be a little bit of a trip through time as we make our way south. I'm going to take some back roads on the way down through the Black Range and see what we can find between here and there. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome aboard the adventure. Let's go see what New Mexico has to offer. Now if I go back through my childhood and I think of my most fond memories growing up as a child in New Mexico, it probably goes back to circa 1987. I would have been about eight years old. And I have memories of the family loading up the Suburban, mom and dad, little brother Chris, loading up the dogs and the camping gear and taking off out into the hills. Probably my first memory of any sort of overlanding it wasn't known as overlanding back then. We just loaded up and headed out through the hills we more called it boonie busting but one of the routes that we took way back then we headed west up into the mountains through this little town called Winston and I have memories of driving through Winston it would have been fairly early in the morning morning light and I just remember the most gorgeous drives out through these grasslands and through the sparse trees up here in the black range of central New Mexico and then eventually we ended up over here in Mugione, and Mugione's got a soft spot in all of our family's heart. It's a cool mining town, and I remember going up and exploring around the old mining town of Mugione. So the fact that I am back here some 30 plus years later, truly enjoying some van life, and getting out here and exploring backcountry and the fact that I get to come out here and explore some of these old routes that really and truly is the root of everything that I get to come out and, and do today and a lot of the reasons why I do it is remembering those times. Coming out here on this trip was a complete accident. It was a last minute change of plans. This dirt road just invited me down it today. It's a happy accident that I'm even here, getting to relive some of these childhood memories, fulfill a dream that I've thought of for a long time. So here we are.
weather down here in New Mexico has been very rainy. They've had quite the monsoon season, which is extremely great for the territory down here because they have been in a major drought. But now with all the rain this year, everything is beautiful, lush, and green. Matter of fact, it looks like right now off to the east, having a bit of a thunderstorm brewing up. And we might just cross paths with it. We'll have to see what happens here. Now this is one of the things that I really appreciate having Starlink on board here on the Sprinter van thanks to the star mount system. Being able to pull up weather forecasts in the area. As we can see here, there is quite the thunderstorm system developing off here. We may end up crossing paths with this storm system here as it starts to approach the area that I'm traveling up in here. So being able to have all this information on the fly out here, completely off grid in the backcountry, is extremely helpful for my safety and where I'm going. Now there's definitely lots of change in scenery on this route as we pass through different scenarios of landscape from wide open plains that just flow on as far as I can see all the way down to deep ponderosa pine forests. It's cool to see the diversity. Brings back memories for sure. This is the little dock that we used to go down and fish off of. Some funny stories of hanging out down here as a kid and catching fish right off the dock. Pretty damn cool being out here with all these thunderstorms around. Kind of dark, dramatic skies all the way around. After spending so much time away from a place that you had fond memories of, it's almost like it was lost 30 some odd years later. You stumble upon it and it's been found again. 
it's definitely surreal in that matter. And the fact that everything kind of feels a little bit abandoned out here, almost as if the day you walked away from here 30 some odd years ago that it just never came to be again. It's definitely a little bit surreal right now. Light is fading fast. I've still got about 40 miles of trail to go before I reach the other side of my destination. So I'm gonna hop to it and get to driving. With the forest fires that have burned here over the years, there's hardly anything left of the trees. This used to just be very tall ponderosa pines that grew up in this area and I just remember it being thick woods. It's crazy now that the forest fires have taken just about all that's left of the trees. This spot right here. This was our go-to spot up here in the Gila. And this was a great little camp spot. Spent many times playing in the dirt here with my hot wheel cars, playing here in the creek, doing what kids do out in the wilderness while you're camping with your parents. That was the cool thing about my parents. Both of them were into photography. The childhood was definitely well documented with some cool old film photos as memories. It's surreal to be standing here in the spot that perhaps was responsible for shaping the rest of your life. Living out of my van full time, traveling, exploring, having a love for the back roads the path less traveled. Spending more time out in the outdoors, living a life with more freedom, and to think that it all started out here in the wilderness of New Mexico. Getting up here into the Gila National Forest and into these mountains was our escape from the arid desert of Las Cruces, New Mexico. So as often as we could, we would escape the desert, come up here into the mountains to enjoy time. Getting up here into the catwalks. This was one of our most favorite fishing spots. Where we spent lots of times hanging out as a family, 
Matter of fact, one year we spent Thanksgiving up here. Dad smoked a turkey on the smoker and enjoyed Thanksgiving as a family together. Lots of memories here as a kid though. This is freaking cool. So way back when, this series of catwalks was originally put in to carry water for three miles from upstream, downstream to supply power to the mill from all of the mining operations up ahead. These flumes were built 20, 30, sometimes 40 feet above the water up in this treacherous canyon. Probably an engineering feat that wouldn't even be attempted today. But the fact that it was built 100 years ago, it's pretty incredible all in itself. These are some of the holes that we used to come fishing. There's no access down to the water. Instead, you've got to stand up here on the catwalk, 20, 30 feet off the edge and catch fish. fish in there well thing is we know they're there we caught one it's not always about catching fish it's also about the journey along the way we got ourselves a pretty cool spot to be hiking fishing and spending a day in Crazy to be here, telling the story of what it was like up here traveling through New Mexico and the adventures that we shared as a family. And that's what shaped everything that is today. It started right here. 